Welcome my dudes and dudettes to Emacs Central where we get a crazy guy who does many things with Emacs like video editing, image editing, audio editing and many other multimedia things that people wouldn't usually think Emacs user would do. What I wanted to share is why do I love using Emacs? Because it grants user a freedom to take on responsibility if they choose so to make their everyday workflow amazing. I don't consider Emacs being a text editor, it is a Lisp interpreter on C core. And that, to me, is the greatest beauty of the application. It doesn't install plugins, it changes itself and does it on a fly. Which means it is very fun and efficient to develop workflow optimizations through wonderful tools that optimize your everyday work. It's awesome that many talented Emacs users and developers have shared their work through incredibly nifty ELSP code. Yet sometimes there is no need for a generalized solution or it's not there yet. And in those cases, Emacs can become the most direct communication layer between your brain and central processing unit of your computer. And that is something I wholeheartedly believe every Emacs user should look into that is something that will solidify your love for Emacs and that is something that blows any competition far away. Emacs is an interpreter of ultimate high-level symbolic hackable language and it provides you with many fun and addicting ways to pimp up your editor of lifetime. It is a whole new world that outcompetes any similar software and for me, may be the most important reason why I use Emacs. I have created many solutions that make me happy Emacs user and efficient at doing so. Today, I wanted to share with you one of my thoughts realized through this hacker's approach. It is a simple yet powerful trick to use your system to its full potential. Blender is another example of an awesome free software application yet it's known for being quite slow at rendering videos with any encoder settings. Though, if we take a look at the use of system resources, we can notice a very interesting fact. The Blender primarily uses just a single core of your CPU. So, if you own a powerful system, you can see how it can be quite an inefficient use of your system resources. But, as I mentioned previously, Blender primarily uses just a single core of your system. There must be a way to use more. And the good news is that, yes, you can use your system smarter and spawn multiple processes that will use your system more efficiently. So, let's lay out the solution. We have to use single blend file. We have to split it in parts. We have to spawn Blender instances for each part render that part out and then somehow combine those parts together in a single file. Luckily, there exists another incredible free software application called FFmpeg that, if you have videos of the same format, lets you to do exactly that. So, if we wrap it all up into a single idea, what we need is a user interface that lets you to specify the blend file and parameters, get info from that file, spawn multiple Blender instances, render parts. When that's done, take all the parts and concatenate them instantaneously using FFmpeg into a single final product. Here you can see visual representation of what the implementation does. So guys, let's get to the demo itself. Here we are in a folder named example containing a video file named example.mp4. Now let's go to Blender itself and let's open video editing view. There let's add the previously mentioned video file and set some parameters like the length of the video in frames. Now let's get back to the default view and there we are going to set parameters like the name of the exported video. Let's name the blend file that is going to be called untitled.blend. And let's try to render out the video by the means that Blender offers itself. 
Now, if we are looking at the use of system resources, you can see that primarily only single core of the CPU is being used. This miss a little higher system resource usage because the screen is being recorded. Let's go back to Emacs and let's find the untitled.blend file. Let's mark it and choose the functionality that I have implemented. Let's specify the amount of the Blender instances to spawn. Now we can look at the newly created buffers. We can see that there are three new buffers created. If we are looking into those buffers, we can look at the current rendering progress. There are also other information that is posted in messages buffer. The good news is that it doesn't really affect our work in Emacs. We can create a new file, call it veryimportant.org and just type away. Now, if we are looking at the system resource usage, we can see that the system is fully utilized. Initially, we rendered out just a single PNG file, which was incorrect. The good news is that it's really easy to change blend file parameters. So let's just do that. Let's get back to the blend file. And there, let's change encoder parameters. This time, we are going to specify to render out video. Let's also make the video a little bit longer, so we can have more time to observe the system use. This now is a new opportunity to check out how the final product is being created. Let's go to the folder where the render parts are being created. We can see that the file sizes are constantly changing, and we could even preview those parts. As we specified to create three Blender instances again, we have three buffers. We can observe the progress there, but not only that, we can open a buffer and list processes that are currently active in Emacs. We have three processes of those Blender instances we spawned. We can stop them or manage them in any other way. If we look at system resource use again, and filter for Blender, we can see three Blender instances actively working in the background in memory. You can see them in a white color. Let's take a look side by side at the system resource use and Blender processes. Here we can see how rendering is finishing up and system usage is falling back down to normal. Also, you can see how Blender processes has disappeared from the list in Emacs. Now, if we would add some additional contents to our very important.org file, you could see down there below in messages line that there are messages that tell you that the rendering has finished. We can also take a separate look at messages buffer and what messages were printed. Now, finally, we can go to our example directory and see that we have a final product file called result.avi. Let's preview the file. You can see it plays back wonderfully and we did it many times faster than we would do just by rendering out of Blender itself. That's it guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to know a little bit more or want to get your hands on this implementation, please check us out on Interwebs. I'll see you next time.